Hello everybody. Previously I shipped my RV7 to the paint shop to get it painted. Initially I thought I would paint the plane myself, however after evaluating my results on spraying the primer I decided to better leave it to a professional. I mean the paint scheme is what you see from the outside immediately. I've discussed the paint scheme before on my builder's blog. Uh, but let me explain how I came to the final scheme. First I made a collection of a lot of pictures of uh, airplanes which had beautiful paint schemes and I decided to team up with plane schemers and send them my collection. The main reason why I selected plane schemers is that they also painted uh, several of the planes I really liked in including the most favorite one for me which is the uh, Lance Air Evolution with a beautiful plane scheme. In several iterations I received multiple possible paint schemes and this allowed me to choose between the different paint schemes and also add some additional feedback. After six or seven cycles we came to this result. And since I'm installing the uh, UL power engine we had to take into account that my cowl is 20 centimeters longer than the, uh, the typical RV7. Plane schemers took that into their model and uh, they changed the um, paint scheme accordingly. When we decided the, on the paint scheme I received a complete document with all the details of the paint scheme and the marking tapes and everything so that a painter can, uh, can start working. Next up was selecting the paint shop. I'm not sure but it's probably very expensive to, uh, to use a real airplane paint shop. So I asked a, a car paint shop close to my house and they initially agreed to take the job but later they said they couldn't do justice to the paint scheme. It, it was way too complex for them. However they did know the right paint shop they set for the job. Mm, turns out it was really close to the airport. So that was uh, logistically uh, a good way to do it. Uh, also this paint shop only did trucks as in 18 wheelers and uh, some industrial equipment and they never did an airplane before. So that was also a challenge for them. I don't have time lapses of the paint job because I didn't want to interfere and I went to the beach for a week with my wife and my kids. So there's only some images that were made during the, the paint job itself. Attaching the wings to the scaffolding is, is hard. Um, I found a way to do it by using a, a tube and stick it through the, uh, the opening in the wingtip for the lights because immediately behind it there is the um, the hole in the wing ribs so I could slide the, the tube all the way into the, uh, well, to the wing tank and this gave it enough um, strength to, uh, to attach the wing to the scaffolding. With the first uh, white layer in place uh, the masking tapes are set for the next layer. The part that remains white is covered with paper and the rest is going to be painted with the next color. It turns out the order of the layers is determined by the opaqueness of the, of the colors. So you start with the light colors and then go gradually to the darker colors. I was a little scared when I saw this result because I was just back from vacation and uh, I saw this dull orange color. I thought, man, I, I think I, I did something with a very shiny metallic orange color and this, this didn't look very well. But the painter uh, said that, yeah, that this is normal uh, and it, it, it really brightens up when the um, when the clear coat is on there. He made parts of the paint wet and you saw that it really came to alive so that's um, yeah, that's uh, an interesting observation. So here the red paint is done and uh, they are now working on the last layer which is the black layer as you can see they're spraying it on the on the wings and after that black layer uh, and then there will be two layers of clear coat to finish it off. Two layers because that gives extra protection for the um, for the paint and I will also add an um, polyurethane wrapping on the leading edges of both the wings and the, um, the landing gear and the horizontal stabilizers so it, um, it will protect the paint. Here in the dry cell you can now see the, the result. I really think it's stunning. It really looks great and I'm really glad that I didn't try to try to paint it myself because I would never have reached this result and I'm really mesmerized by the beauty of the paint scheme it's, it's fantastic. So now we can ship 
um, the airplane to the airport. This time we have to even be more careful not to scratch any paint. So in the first batch we did the uh, the wings and the horizontal stabilizers and all the small parts that went into the trunk. Uh, the canopy doesn't fit into the trunk, we found out. So in the second ride we moved the, um, the fuselage on the trailer and uh, also put the canopy on there. We very slowly drove through the airport. It was only about four miles, so that was uh, no problem. Okay, let's check out the uh, the paint job in my uh, temporary hangar. So this is uh, the hangar where I will be working, uh, doing the final assembly of the RV-7. And um, let's check it out. Continuing building my pie in the sky. <laughs> 